play to commit to staying for the entire lesson because I've got a really, really good one today. Wonderful Beatles song. And uh, of course, it's Good Day Sunshine. I hope that your day is going wonderfully. Uh, I have a wonderful lesson lined up for you. We're going to go through the chords. We're going to play the tune. I'm going to show you some extra fancy stuff for those of you who are you know, hungry for something uh, with a little more, um, you know, just a little more of a soloistic uh, texture. I'm going to teach you a way to play a little bit of an instrumental solo during the break. But we'll get to all that later. Right now, I want to say hello to everybody. Let me know in the chat where you're from. Hope you can hear me and see me okay. We got some folks from Lithuania in the house. Nan is here from Salt Lake. Hello, Nan. We got Jefferson in the house from Tampa Bay, Florida. I hope everything is going all right there in Tampa Bay. Have been thinking about you all with the situation at Piney Point. I hope that you are all safe and well. I go to Florida every year. Think about y'all. Hello, Cassie. Hello, Dogmar. Welcome, Terry Garcia. She was uh, first in the house. Hello, Terry. Thanks for joining. So we got Barry in the house from Brewster. Hello, Barry. And of course, we got Michael in the house, the mountains of California. Welcome, everyone. I hope your ukulele is in tune. I'm going to be showing this on high G as well as low G ukulele. So let's jump right into the lesson just to let you know the general flow of things. I'm going to take you through a couple of chapters of this lesson and um, then we will have a mindfulness meditation at the end. The mindfulness meditation is a practice to bring our deep listening and our presence into the present moment where we can more fully experience all the wonders of life and embrace the difficulties that come up. This is incredibly uh, nourishing practice and it's open to everybody. If you'd like to stick around for the end, I hope you'll enjoy uh, joining me for the mindfulness practice and there's always a musical application as well. So thanks so much. Can you all hear me okay? We got Edmonton in the house. Matthias, good to have you here. David, hello. We got some sunshine and hailstorms in the UK, apparently. <laughs> well, welcome, everybody. Let's jump right in with Good Day Sunshine. If you haven't already, download the song sheet or just follow along here. Song sheet is available at a link down below. And I want to mention in the, in the uh, video description is a link to a survey. My many thanks to everybody who has participated in it, that survey is going to be up for one more week and the survey is to find out what subjects you are interested in me teaching upcoming five-day challenges so thanks for everybody's responses you're giving me a lot of great ideas please keep support this broadcast but right now play a moment of it for you please join it <laughs> so i wanted to demonstrate right now you can play Okay, everybody. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Well, it appears that there's something something going on with the stream. I am going to try again, okay? I'm going, not sure what the issue is, going to try to reboot. All right, friends, for those of you who are still in the room, can you hear me? I think it might be working now. My hands are moving. <laughs> All right, we're back. 
Yeah, I don't know what happens, folks. Uh, sometimes, um, you know, there's so many people using the servers. Um, everything appears to be working correctly on my end of the line. So apologies for this. But let's get right back into it. Hilda, thank you for joining me. Normally, things work out just fine with the technology. Um, so glad you're back with me. Thank you for hanging. Keep on smiling. That is really the key, and I appreciate you all staying cool. I'm not surprised, of course. Thank you. So let's get back into this, and um, let's uh, jump ahead into the section called the chorus, which has two chords which are a little tricky, but if we can hang with this, then we will really be able to, you're gonna de develop a very cool skill. Changing from B to F sharp is actually a process uh, that involves using a bar chord and a very important chord progression. I'm gonna zoom in on my hand right now. Join in with me, please. Lay your first finger across right here, and then this is the B major chord. Good day. And then we would move to F sharp. Sunshine. So to play B major, a, a good idea is to lay the first finger across all the strings and just muffle. You know, don't even make, don't even make a sound yet. Then you're gonna take your middle finger, place it on the third fret of the third string, and then your ring finger, you're gonna place it on the fourth fret of the fourth string. Notice how I'm not even making a sound. It's just muffled so my hand gets a chance to practice being very, very relaxed. Now you squeeze it just a little bit to make the clear sound and practice turning it off. Now this alone is a really cool practice which has other applications and other styles but the idea is that you really can get to know your B major bar chord quicker by taking the time just to soften up around it all right some folks like to just use a little bit of the finger on those top two strings but if you can use the whole finger you'll find that the next chord, F sharp, set, F sharp major, uh, is actually going to be uh, a lot easier. Take a look, what I do now, I have the B chord, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide this down one fret, and just lift up the middle finger and bring it to the second string, and there is your F sharp chord. Now F sharp is the five chord in the key of B. B would be one, and this is five. Right? Very common chord progression. Some would say the bedrock of all Western harmony is the one, five, one progression. All right. So Paul McCartney wrote the song based around the, this in the key of B, and I'm teaching it to you in the key of B because it, one, it's the same key, and two, if we can hang with what's difficult in a relaxed way, just like technical difficulties, then we can, you know, move through it and, and learn a lot in the process. So, you know, watch this video a few times. I'm trying to go as, you know, without going too slowly, but also thoroughly. Watch it a few times, and here's what you do is you make friends with the B chord, first by muffling, then squeezing. Exactly, Andre Bach. It's all one, five, one. <laughs> well, with Bach even more. And then what you do is for the F sharp seven, move it down one fret, drop the middle finger down. You may like to repeat this a few times, giving a lot of attention to where is my hand relaxing. Good day, sunshine. These two shapes are very, very important because you're gonna come across these in a lot of music. All right, good day, sunshine. While you're practicing this, of course, you can go to the ground floor or the basement level of just muffling, getting the chord to sound clearly, which is a process of figuring out which part of my finger is gonna, you know, make the sound correct, you know, which part of my finger do I have to use? But once you're getting comfortable with that, 
right away, my suggestion would be right away is to make music with it. So just sing. You could make up your own words or sing. Good day, sunshine. So while we practice, we can enjoy being musical at the same time. You dig? Let me know in the chat if you understand what I'm saying. Thank you for coming back. We had a little technical snafuru, snafuru badoobie, but we are back. Good day, sunshine. I think a squirrel might have been chewing on the telephone line out there. But we're back, and thank you for joining. Now, the next chord after this, kind of you know, a chord that we all know, E7. Good day, sunshine. And I understand that it's uh, natural to want to have a quick way out. You know, come on, man, give me, a, give me your shortcut. I am giving you the shortcut. The shortcut is to slow down, make friends with it, and you just do it maybe three times. And you will make it there, okay? Be patient. Drop by drop, the bucket gets filled. So, my friends, let's play the chorus together. Good day, sunshine. And if these chords are not clear today, no sweat. Watch this video again. For now, you may like to just muffle the, and move the shapes. You know, or squeeze as you can. Are you ready? Let's do it. We'll start with the four bar introduction, building up on the E chord or E7 chord. One, two, thank you for jamming. Here we go. One, two, three, four. A little louder. go through the verse in a moment but let's practice that chorus one more time and let's get to know the count you know this song is in 4-4 four, four, but it's very clever because it's organized if we count to eight it's organized in three and then five listen and count along with me one two three four five six seven eight one two three one two three four five one two three one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And the last one is a little different. Oh, Sir Paul, with your tricky counting. Thank you, Paul. Now, let's play this one more time. Whether you count or you just feel it, let's play some music. You ready? Introduction, we'll play the chorus, and then we're going to play the verse. Here we go. A one intro. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. I need to laugh. When the sun is out, I've got something I can laugh about. Now, I hope you can laugh about this chord progression in a moment because this is a, a very, you know, this chord progression has a lot in common with New Orleans jazz and swing. It's moving from the one chord, A, to the six chord, F sharp seven, to the two chord, to the five chord. You, this whole music theory of understanding which scale step you're on is not required to know the song and to play it, but it's helpful. Let's get into the, just the nuts and bolts of how we play this chord. Okay, A major. Okay, A major, the next chord, F sharp seven. Well, it's just, you know, don't let the name, you know, fool you. It's just like an F seven but we've moved it up one fret. Okay, so let's build our F, F7 first by playing our F chord. Drop the ring finger on the third fret. Drop the pinky on the third fret. That's F7. Now slide it up one fret. Voila, F7. 
sharp seven. To practice this dance, you may like to do it without strumming, like this. Now I'm gonna zoom in close to my hand so you can see the dance. I move from A to, to F sharp, to back to A to and F sharp. And this is a great practice to do. Let's do it together. This is just left hand, fretting hand practice. Are you ready? Estas listo? Okay. One, two, two beats each chord. A to change. Back to A. F sharp. One more time. A. F sharp. Now try strumming. got to work a little harder on this song because it is some new shapes. If you're a master of these shapes already, groovy. Go deeper. See if you can make your hand even lighter. See if you can draw out an even crisper sound. You know, there's always more to learn. So are you with me? Yes, it is a little bit of a challenge, so take your hand and relax it. And Trish, this is, a, you know, you'll know when we meet for our private session that this is the kind of chord progression you hear in a lot of old time jazz. Now the next chord is B7. You got options with B7. I put two of them on this sheet. One of them is just to bar at the second fret. And when the sun is out, okay? Same process as before, Muff, muffle the chord, squeeze a little bit, make a clean sound, and release it. Yeah, and if you're patient with this process, you'll be richly rewarded. You really will. The next chord after B7 is E7. We just slide that finger down, pivot, plop the E7 on. All right, so you can just practice these four chords and that alone will start to sound like an old-time jazz tune. Take a listen. We'll two, do two strums of A. Join in with me, please. Two strums of A. Two strums of F sharp 7. Four strums of B7. Now four strums of E7. And now A to for four. And let's do it a second time. Are you ready? You can hear Paul McCartney's love of, uh, you know, music hall and vaudeville music in this tune. It's really clear. One, two, here we go, slowly. A, F sharp seven, B seven for four. Then E seven for four. Oh yeah, A. Let's do it again. I need to laugh And when the sun is out Well, I've got something I can laugh about Of course we're playing it slow, just practice I feel so good In a special way Well, I'm in love it's a sunny day. When you practice it slow like this, you can really relax the hand and get to know the chord shapes. All right, now we're gonna move forward, but first let's um, play this verse a little faster. You can watch this video many times. Thank you for those of you who are still with me. I know we had a little bit of a technical issue and it wasn't my computer. I think it was something with the, I don't know, maybe it's the warm weather messing with the internet connection, but I'm glad we're back. If you're enjoying this video and this experience so far, hope you'll give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There are links down below if you would like to offer any, any support. And there's also a link to a survey down in the description. Please fill that out. That survey is gonna help me to know what kind of courses you're interested in me offering for a five-day challenge. Thank you to everybody who is already um, offered their opinion. Many thanks. Thank you uh, for joining me. And um, and I hope that you <laughs> your sunshine day is very 
happy. <laughs> Almost as happy as this little guy. Right here. Yeah, this is what this is, uh, this is what daily life. Right here. I hope you can hear those giggles. Yeah. <laughs> So, so that's little Rowan, and Rowan has many instruments to play, and uh, and we tune him to an open tuning, and he has at it, and he giggles a lot. Thank you for indulging me in a little share. I hope that you and your family are doing well. Let's practice, okay? We're going to play the chorus, and then we're going to play the verse, and we'll just keep on jamming with this. You know, remember that this song is challenging, and um, but if you're willing to just go slowly and practice mindfully, you'll find that you can work through any block by being soft, by being fluid, just like water wears down the rock, all right? Water, the softest thing, wears down the rock. You being soft and being flexible like water, you will break through, okay? So just be patient. Okay, it takes time. It takes me. It's taken me a long time. So, here we go. Thank you for all the good, all the sweet messages. Let's play the chorus. We'll take it right at Good Day Sunshine, and then we'll play the verse, and then another chorus, and then another verse, and then when we get to this solo, I've got something really special to share with you that hopefully won't make you want to click away. It is. It is challenging, but it's it's super cool. All right, let's jam. Good day, sunshine. Ready? One, two, I want two, three, well, good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. I need to laugh, and when the sun is out, well, I've got something I can laugh about. I feel good in a special way. I'm in love and it's a sunny day. Good day, sunshine. Do, do, do. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. We take a walk. The sun is shining down. It burns my feet as they touch the ground. Solo D, B7, E7, A7, D. Chorus. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. And we lie beneath the shady tree. I love her and she is loving me. She feels good. And yeah, oh, she's looking fine. Well, I'm so proud to know that she is mine. Chorus. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. So thank you, everybody. I'm talking you through this. This is a challenging tune, but I wanted to offer something with a little more meat on the bone. Believe me, I've got all kinds of beginner-friendly tutorials on my channel and also coming soon. I've made a bunch of really nice tunes that only have two and three chords. This is more challenging, but I hope that you're digging this. Let me know by hitting the like button. If you are, thank you for hanging with me. And it's always worth it to go through uh, you know, some things that are a little more challenging for our technique, so we, we grow a bit. The challenging thing is the bar chord for many people. Just to recap, soften the hand, make, make the shape under the fingers very soft, and then squeeze just a little bit 
and then lift up the pressure. You'll soon start to focus more on when the hand is relaxed than when you're squeezing. So it's a little shift in consciousness, a shift in awareness from the squeeze to the release. All right, it takes time to get there, of course. We wanna make sure the chord is ringing clearly, and that's gonna mean you getting really curious about which part of your finger is working. So we've got that, and then, you know, you just slide that on down. Once you get the hang of using your finger with a bar and loosening up often, you're gonna find that it's quite easy just to slide it down, move that finger down. All right, and that is the classic 1-5-1 one, one progression that you hear. All over Western music, pop music, classical music, reggae, everything has got that very important chord progression in it. All right. Now, my friends, thank you for joining me. This is, thank you for your kind feedback. This is different than, um, you know, a a jam where we can just quickly turn the page, you know, go from one tune to another. We're going a little deeper into it. If you dig in this, thank you very much. Just want to give a quick shout out to everybody who was a patron. Thank you. You are the best. I appreciate your support. There will be bonus content this month and every month on Patreon. Thank you for your support. If you would like to uh, keep in the loop of what I do, there is a link down below to sign my mailing list. And there's also some links if you're interested in offering a donation. It is not expected but it sure is appreciated so thank you very much and this little guy thanks you pretty, pretty darn cute so uh we sing this song to our little boy and many songs to him and uh from the time he was like three months old we were just sing good day sunshine and he learned the you know where the sun is very quickly let me know in the chat if you are a parent, a great parent, a great, great grandparent. I hope that your families are doing well. This is a very, very cheerful song to share with people, and it's worth the effort, I think, to learn it. Not only because you learn a great tune, but you're going to learn some cool skills. Let's get into, let's get into, the, uh, into this little solo section, okay? You strum your D major chord, and you can see it on the chord chart right there. D major. Now, you can play your D major chord in a number of different ways. I'll zoom in on my hand in a moment. D. Then you go to your B7 chord, which also you have options. And then you play your E7 chord. Then A7, and then D major. If you're familiar with the tune... You know this is the little piano instrumental. You could do this with a kazoo or just with your voice scat, all right? And um, I have sketched out here uh, just one of many ideas of how you can embellish this using some, some tricky chords, and we'll get into that in a moment. But first, let's just make friends with these shapes, okay? All right, you may like to watch this video again so you can jot these down on a piece of paper. The first common fingering for D is to use three fingers. Join in with me. And I should demonstrate this on a, on a low G as well. Try that out with three fingers, all right? All right, you could use fingers one, two, three. You could use fingers two, three, four. Some people use just one finger. And if you can bend that knuckle, you just get that open string to ring, all right? There's an option that I think is a good option to start exploring, and I mentioned it last week when our tutorial for Good Morning. Place your middle finger here, and keep it light as always, and then what you're going to do is just touch this, these two strings with the tip of the index finger, and you're going to flatten the finger. Everybody will experience this differently, but it's, it's like you're flattening it a little bit like that. And you cover two strings with one finger, and you got to play with which part of the finger needs to touch. Now you're playing three strings with just two fingers, and it makes it, it can make D major a lot easier, especially when you change from this to this alternate B7. 
Now this alternate B7 looks just like a G. And what I've done is I've taken my G chord and I've hopped it up to these strings. All right, so bo do 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 bo bo bo. I'll go through this many times. Bo do 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 bo bo bo. All right, that's the little instrumental break. You don't have to use these alternate fingerings. You can, of course, do a fine job of just playing your D like this. You can play your B7 as a bar. Notice how my middle finger is already on the string it needs to be on. Ain't that cool? You know, if we go deep into just one chord progression, yeah, I know it's not as sexy as like playing 10 songs in an hour, but you will actually go deep. I think deeper into your learning journey just by taking one chord progression. You can take just five minutes and really master it. It will serve you well. And if we're patient with it, it can be a wonderfully calming experience just to hang with one chord progression. You can make it musical. Alright, so I think you get what I'm talking about. It's making the process of learning it musical. So you have lots of options for D. You could use this two finger option, the three finger option. You can play B7 as a bar. You can play B7 as this alternate fingering that is right there on the song sheet. You see at the bottom of the list of chords. And there's also another B7, and it's right here. I didn't write it on the song sheet, but it's here. We used it with Good Morning last week, and it's open string, second fret, third fret, fourth, all right? So you always have options. That's, that's one thing you can always count on with chords. There's always a different way to finger it, all right? Different voicings. But the point is, is that we just choose one and enjoy it. So once you're comfortable with this idea, I'm going to go back to my high G. And, you know, we just play. You can start to now sing a little something. Two beats of D. One, two, two beats of B7. E7 for four. A7 for four. And then D for four. Go listen to the Beatles. Good day, sunshine. Bust out your old vinyl if you still have it, your eight tracks, your cassettes, or go to YouTube and listen to it. But listen to this solo. It goes by kind of fast. One, two, three, four, D, B7, E7, A, D. Let's do it again, the solo. Bum, ba dum ba dum bum ba dum bo do da 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 de zo bum bum One more time, solo. ba do dum ba dum ba bo da ba da ba wa zi bum 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 ba yo do All right, you get the idea? Have fun, be musical. As soon as you can get the hands to feel comfortable in the chords, just get musical with it. You know, it's amazing how much more fun you can have going through the technical difficulties, all right? It's not meant to be drudgery, you dig? Now, you can have an awesome time. Just, I don't have a kazoo with me. Actually, I do. You could just kazoo it, all right? One. You ready? Let's play the chorus. One more time, ready? One, two. Excuse me play the solo. Ready? One. Solo. I'm going to kazoo. You kazoo. You scat. Two. Hey. Huh. can't do this for long because my baby will start screaming. He doesn't like the kazoo. So my loves, my friends, let's uh, now learn something a little more challenging and we'll go through this 
rather quickly. But that's not because I want to leave you in the dust. It's because I want to show you clearly what I'm doing. And then you can watch this again. And if you're interested in this, you can you know, study it. You can take your D major chords. This is all for the solo. And what I've done is I've put the melody notes with black ink. This is the sixth fret. That right there is the fourth fret, okay? For those of you who are unfamiliar with this system, this shows you that you're moving the shape up to there at the sixth fret. So let me demonstrate. Here's the, here's the instrumental. Two, three, four. So it's just one, it's something I just did off the top of my head right before I went live here. You could take these chords for the chorus and play a bit of a chord melody. Just to be clear, it's these chords right here, D, B7, E7, A7, and then D. So what I did was I played a D6 chord. And then I'm going to take my other fingers, I'm going to walk up that string, okay, and that's the first gesture. All right, now I'm gonna move on to the next gesture, but you could take this and apply the same process that we've been doing this whole lesson to soften up. All right, now our pinky ends up at the fifth fret, but it doesn't stay there for long because it's about to move to the sixth fret. And that's the top note of your B7 chord. All right, that B7 chord is right here. Fourth fret, sixth fret, fifth fret, sixth fret. All right, you take a jot this down when you watch this again. Listen to this chord melody. So it's a bit complex. But that note can arrive early, and then the rest of the chord just plops down underneath it. Right after that, the pinky is on the 6th fret, but it's about to end up right there at the 7th fret because the melody is going to move up one more fret. Take a look. And then it moves up for the E7 chord. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a bar here at the fourth fret and the pinkies at the seventh fret. And then we're gonna have the same motion that we had for this D chord, but we're going in the opposite direction. All right. So let me put this all together. Again, I'm doing this rather quickly. You can put all kinds of different rhythms in it. Best to keep it simple at first. So this fits over the chorus, uh, the solo chords. Two, three, four. And you can work out your own way of, you know, you don't have to play every string. It can just be a strum and then single notes. See how I had single notes followed by chords right here, or maybe a full chord. Followed by a chord, right? Next, we go to A7. We just saw the same shape right here for B7. One of the topics of the upcoming courses I'm going to be offering is a challenge are different chord shapes and why they are the way they are. Why do you put the fingers in this shape for an A7, etc., etc. This is a very common shape. We just played it right here. Okay, it's a voicing based on the G7 shape that we know and love. And here we are playing it right here at A7. Okay, now here you strum A7. The melody note is right there at the fourth fret with the pinky. And if you're comfortable barring, you can bounce back and forth between those two notes. 
but you don't have to. You can do your own thing. You can just play. Plenty of melody there, but if you're comfortable to do this, you... All right, you could make melody simply by going down and up one fret. Okay? The last chord is, of course, when we return to the D at the end of the solo section, and for that, I just go back to where I started, the D6 chord. All right? Am I offering too much information? Not all my lessons are this <laughs> complex, but this is, uh, you know, chord melody is a combination of being able to technically play it, understand the harmony. There's a lot to it, but it's not impossible. Understanding short passages like this and building chord solo vocabulary is a great thing to do, and it can be really, uh, really enjoyable. So let me take you through this. I know um, I am keep going back between my different views, but you can jot down these diagrams, okay? And let me just play it a few times very clearly for you to practice with, okay? And you can enjoy this and, and you know, make your own versions. I'll play it nice and easy. Two, one, two, three, four. Again, you saw what I did. I took the A7. Plenty of melody right there. All right, let's do it again. One, a two, un, deux, trois, quatre. my finger is <gasps> good day sunshine oh my god <laughs> right <laughs> you know I know the internet is filled with lots of promises of you know I'll teach you this thing in 10 seconds we're gonna learn this thing in one minute for some subjects yeah they can be explained in one minute but music takes time and that's good news if you're enjoying yourself and if you're enjoying each step along the way, let it take a long time, right? So I encourage you all to have a nice cup of tea, maybe, I don't know, a glass of fine scotch, coffee, pictures of your grandkids, whatever lights you up, fresh flowers, make your practice space into a place that you can't wait to come to. And your practice room becomes a place it's not just about learning music, but it's about being with yourself, you know, and being at peace. Are you ready to do this one more time? This is tricky stuff. So I'm going to demo it one more time. Then we're going to meditate. And I appreciate you joining me so very much. Let's go into this. It is a lot of info, so I'm doing my best to break it down. You know, if we were going to play, I feel good -da 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 -da, in a special way. Well, I'm in love, and it's a sunny day. And then we would go into the instrumental, okay? It's actually different lyrics there. Um, the, the lyrics would be this. We'll start at the s verse 2, then we'll play the solo, and then we'll wrap up. Thank you so much for hanging. Verse 2. A one, a two. A one, two, three. We take a walk. The sun is shining down. It burns my feet as they touch the ground. Chorus. Good day, sunshine. Oh. This tune is tricky, all right? It's not like um, another song where we could just jump in and play it without all this detailed explanation. I appreciate you hanging here. If you enjoyed this, please appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, Ukulele Zen, there's a link 
down below if you would like to support with a, a donation. Sure, appreciate that. Not expected, but of course, I appreciate it very much. Link to my mailing list down below. And if you'd like to join as a patron, there are all kinds of perks and benefits for patrons, some uh, bonus content, wonderful community of folks there at Patreon. So thank you so much to everybody who is supporting my work. And um, this little guy appreciates you too. <laughs> time I'm not getting much sleep but I don't mind at all I hope you and your family are doing well thank you for hanging with this lesson technical uh, difficulties with the server and everything you are the best for hanging in and I appreciate you being here good day sunshine there's a song sheet down below there's a link to a song sheet down below so go download that be patient with the process of getting this bar chord these two shapes are very important to know. Right, this shape is also an important one to know, the F sharp seven. And then of course you've got this really juicy chord melody which could be played in so many different ways but I just took one that I thought would be relatively accessible but still have some musical meat on the bones so to speak. How you feeling out there? Let me know in the chat. Appreciate everybody offering your, your support with Super Chats. Thank you, John. Thank you, Nan. Thank you, John Rushman and John Fur and Nan McIntyre. So glad to have you join in. Um, I would like to share a brief uh, and peaceful mindfulness meditation with you right now. And let me just say that... Uh, when I'm sharing meditation, it is not a religion or anything like that. It is a practice, a practice of you know, we're, with meditation, at least the way I want to share it. We are not um, promised a peaceful, blissed out experience. What we are practicing is being present with what is. And there's an old story from Buddhist traditions Thank you, Dogmar. I appreciate that. There's a story from Buddhist traditions or an analogy of uh, if you take a handful of salt and you place it in a glass of water, you can't drink that salt water without being sick. It's just too much. It's too strong. But if you take that same handful of salt and you throw it into a river, you can drink it. And what meditation teaches us, what mindfulness meditation teaches us is to be like the river, to be a container that can take the salt, both the challenges of life, to be able to embrace them, to recognize them and transform them the same way we hold the screaming baby and calm it with love. And we can also be much more present for the miracles and the wonders of life. So when I share meditation, it is not a, um, a promise of there's never going to be any problem. In fact, at first it can be uh, shocking how many things we notice that we don't like in our meditation. So what we are going to do is listen to this bell and allow our deep breathing and our listening to bring us back into the present moment and there is no, there's no making mistakes. I appreciate that, Barbara. So glad that you are here. There are no mistakes. There's no wrong way to meditate, no right way to meditate. But I just wanted to be clear with my intention. We are not meditating with any aim to get somewhere. We are just arriving and embracing the present moment. Listening is a powerful, powerful meditation in and of itself. So while we listen to this bell, I encourage you to, if you haven't already, place your feet on the floor, sit upright but relaxed. You may like to lay down. 
and bring attention to your breathing and the sound of this bell. As you listen to the bell, your mission is to keep your attention on the sound of the bell until it dissolves all the way into silence. There's no mistake you haven't messed up if, if thoughts come in and anything distracts you from your listening. Just return. Just return with kindness. And that's what the practice is all about. And the practice of music is all about. Just keep returning with kindness. All right, let us listen. Enjoy the sound of this beautiful bell. Thank you all for being with me. Thank you. Let us breathe and listen. Bringing your attention to your in-breath and your out-breath. Begin to notice where your breath is. Do you feel it in your nose? Perhaps in the back of your throat? The rise and fall of your belly? Just remain present with your breath, with the sensations in your body. Bring a loving awareness to your body and to the content of your mind. And be the river, the banks of the river that can hold the flow, the endless stream of energy that is flowing through you. And just observe and appreciate the wonder of it all. Allow your breathing to be as natural as possible without directing it in any way or controlling it in any way. Just observe the flow of breath entering and exiting you. On your in-breath, you can anchor yourself into the present moment by silently saying in on your in-breath and out on your out-breath. You can use whatever words you resonate with. Be thank you. It might be love. It 
And just for the next few moments, be with your breath fully. Your plans and projects will all be waiting for us, patiently waiting for us as we pause and come home to the island of self in the here and the now. Enjoy your breathing. Allow a smile to blossom on your lips. Remain connected to your breathing, listening to the sounds in the room as you slowly move your fingers, wiggle your toes. You may like to rub your hands together and cup them over your eyes and open them into the cupped hands for a gentle re-entry. And remain connected to your breathing. And I invite you to just for a moment, please listen. In my home, there's a tradition that anyone who rings the bell is inviting a moment to return. So when we hear the bell, we take three breaths and come back. So your bell of mindfulness could be anything in your